Well, greetings and salutations. Uh, um, I have a name that I'm not using my regular name. Uh, I'm using a name that I have with my uh, club membership. It's Retson Noor. We had this fellow here that gave me some paperwork here. We're going to be discussing some of the information here that he wrote on the paper. Uh, so uh, we're going to take it from there. So we're going to let him introduce introduce himself. I introduce myself. As my, na my name is Bill Fabricini. That's my real name. Okay. He's <laughs> using his real name. So I'm a little concerned about stuff on the internet, so if you use your real name, you might get problems. Okay, so uh, he has some information here, and uh, uh, I want to mention that uh, this guy here is uh, uh, probably pretty well known. Uh, they may not know his name, but they probably see him. Uh, uh, do you walk seven days a week? in this area here because people drive up and down the road yep. they probably saw you walking there he's walking there i've and been walking for over a year now so he's been uh, over here over a year in this particular area here and uh, i want to explain three years in this particular area well uh i i want to explain that uh this guy happens to be a homeless person but uh uh he's kind of staying mainly in Hadley here and you see him going up and down uh, the road with a shopping cart so he's probably pretty well known uh, so we're going to be uh, discussing some of the stuff that he wrote on the paper here and I was kind of glancing at it this morning and uh, the thing that I was kind of uh, looking at some of the stuff here he said that he wrote some letters or had some uh, information some from some uh, prominent of officials that you probably know of. Uh, President Obama, uh, Dominic Sano, Richard Neal. He said he uh, contacted these people. Uh, so I, I put that at the top of the program because everybody knows their name. So I'm going to let him uh, mention about the, the famous people that he was contacting. Well, when I, I was living at the, uh, Friends of the Homeless, I, I was evicted from there uh, yeah, for no fault of my own. I didn't do anything wrong. But I was trying to make some changes there that would help people, you know, and they didn't like that, you know. <laughs> I don't have to tell you that. Anyways, uh, I have a letter from President Obama when, uh, and also uh, Dominic Sarno, and also uh, a, a referral letter, a lawyer's referral letter from Richard Neal. But some, I don't know, I, 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 I'm not sure. I think that uh, his office uh, must be saying no, because every time, uh, every time I went to a lawyer, which I went to a lot of them, you know, I have proof of that, uh, they, they, they wouldn't take it. Now, who would, who would refuse a referral from Richard Neal? I, I can't understand it. Anyways, that happened. Uh, I contacted, I sent three different uh, uh, messages, three different times in the three years, uh, to all 13 of the counselors of uh, Springfield. <laughs> I didn't even get a reply, not even a reply, you know. I mean, uh, President Biden goes over to uh, Soviet Union, what does he do? He tells them about human rights. Well, you know, we could use some, I'm human, I would like to say that I'm human, and uh, we could use some changes here, you know. Uh, you could ask Elizabeth Warren or, uh, or uh, Bernie Sanders, they'll tell you. Next thing uh, uh, we had listed on here is that uh, you said you were at the Friends of the Homeless, yeah. and uh, that uh, uh, you were making insinuations that they were putting drugs in your toothpaste. They so. did. They don't, uh, they, they, there's a, it's known that uh, there's a woman there that uh, is, is seen coming out of people's rooms when they're not there. I told them that I didn't want uh, anybody coming, going in my room when I'm not there. Uh, I, they, they, they didn't even send me notices to uh, change the filters to sneak in my room, you know. They were doing that, so I put, I had to put a, 
uh, my bicycle in front of the door so that I'd know if somebody was in my room or not. Four different times they put uh, drugs in my toothpaste. The reason I knew it, the reason I caught on right away is because when you brush your teeth, automatically your gum started bothering you. When I changed the tube, a toothpaste went away right away. Uh, this is true. And also, there was a police officer that did that to me when I was uh, jogging down at, the, down at the river at 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the only reason I know it was him, he's the only one that knew I was there. Okay, uh. Okay. well, the, the uh, thing is that uh, uh, you think that there was drugs in the toothpaste. There my, was. My wife claims that I'm stealing her underwear and I'm not stealing her underwear. Uh, Sometimes people make uh, accusations that may not necessarily be true. Did you have your toothpaste tested? How could I? I don't know how to do that. You well, know, you, you would uh, contact the library and they would tell you where to go. There was drugs in the go. toothpaste, believe me. I'm not stupid. There was drugs in the toothpaste. Okay, so you claim yeah. that there was four, four different you times. Know, my doctor knows it. My okay. doctor knows it. Did he uh, uh, get uh, get the toothpaste to check it when you... No, he didn't. He, I told you. That. Who the hell could do that? You, you, got, you have, have to get, tests for you'd these have things. To get, yeah, you'd have to this get. is a lawsuit kind of material that if somebody's doing They're something. doing stuff like that. They've been doing it for years. You go to these free meals, you know, and, and they're not free. You know, they're, they're, they're actually there to control you. And if, you, if, if you're not doing what they want you to do or acting the way they want, to, want you to act, what they'll do is they'll just uh, put drugs in your food. And that's known. You know, uh, don't think I'm insinuating it. Everybody knows that. All the homeless people do. Okay, well, uh, I'm not going to be It's all about making, control. I'm not going to be debating it because uh, this is uh, something that he claims all that right. they put in. What's the so, next one? We, uh, we the first it. one here, he has, uh, 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 he has listed here an appeal uh, that there was some kind of uh, letter stating that they wanted uh, you to register to devote uh, and okay. that you wanted that to get a, food stamps. What that was, what that was, was the welfare. The welfare sent me a letter, you know, saying that uh, in the letter it said that uh, they wanted me to uh, register to vote. I sent them back uh, uh, the letter saying, this is about food stamps, it's not about voting. I said, and I know a lot of people that get food stamps that don't vote, <laughs> that never voted in their life. They canceled my food stamps. That's when I wrote a letter to John Lewis, and uh, John Lewis uh, eventually talked, I guess he talked to uh, Obama, who sent me the letter. That's when I got the letter from Obama. Okay, well, now uh, the next thing uh, we had listed here, uh, and you did uh, mention about the uh, free meals, but uh, you're claiming that uh, the meals are not free because uh, uh, they're requiring people to uh, sign up what, or what something they, or what, other? Well, what they're doing is they, what they're doing is they, those meals uh, are, are payment for everything that you've done, that they've done to you and everything they're going to do, you know. All that is is a control thing, you know, uh, and you're really, they're really expensive is what those, they end up being. I asked uh, Richard Neal, I went to the, uh, uh, the, the Thanksgiving meal uh, to talk to Richard Nixon. I asked him for help. He said, sure, I'll help you. <laughs> you know, that was the help, the meal. <laughs> I never got any help. I did get a letter, referral letter, but that didn't get me anywhere. You know, uh, I uh, just talked to, uh, uh, the, I just talked yesterday to um, legal aid and uh, they said that they would get back to me but you know I've heard stuff like that right along I don't know what's going to happen uh, anyways we'll see what happens but uh, I, I've been uh, I've been like this for a long time 12 years 12 years the, the uh, government taught me not to trust them they, they spent a lifetime messing you up then they ask you what's wrong with you what's wrong with you is the question I got Okay, and uh, some other uh, things that you had written on these papers here. Uh, there were several uh, things that... Yeah, I'd uh, like to, to cover all of them. Uh, we had some uh, thing here that uh, I wasn't quite sure that you were talking about. Uh, uh, the, 
some kind of uh, problem at your a place that there was some kind of sexual harassment at the yes, uh, homeless. The guy that was running the place was uh, sexually harassed a woman and uh, was found guilty, I guess, because they paid thirty thousand dollars to her outside of, in, a, in, a, in a outside of court uh, to uh, to keep him. <laughs> to keep him. <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, now, some people may not know anything about the Friends of the Homeless because uh, this is Hadley. Where is the Friends of the Homeless located? That's located on, uh, uh, on uh, Worthington Street in Springfield, 755 Worthington Street in Springfield. Okay, now you originally came from Springfield, so you know yeah. all about Springfield. Well, uh, yeah, I grew up there. You grew up yeah. there, so you're basically a Springfield-oriented yes, person. Yes, so. I, um, I, 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 I know most of, a lot of people there, and uh, yes, I'm from Springfield. So, and, uh, you know, I, I, to be honest with you, you know, I don't have anything against uh, the gay people, but there's an awful lot of them out here, and, uh, and I really, you know, I'm, a, I'm in a little t bit different world, that's all. Okay, uh, uh, it's a lot more uh, uh, prevalent the uh, LGBTQ uh, uh, people in this day and age because they feel that uh, uh, they have a legitimate right to uh, be who they are and they want to, uh, you know, be able to uh, do things without being harassed. So uh, uh, that's. Uh, really nothing unusual. It's like uh, blacks don't want to be uh, harassed and uh, a lot of these minorities and a lot of people feel that the police are harassing people uh, just uh, for who they are. They may be harassing uh, people of color or they might be harassing well, uh, other kinds of people. Well, can I say a few things about that? He wants yeah. to talk now about the police here. Yeah, okay, the police. Uh, well, you know, Ron, I'd like to say that uh, when I was going to the YMCA, you know, uh, there was a guy, he was a sergeant, a retired sergeant for the police department. And uh, he was bragging to the old men down there every day about how he, how he, bur when somebody burglarized a, a, a place, he would, he, he would go in there with his, uh, and fill up his trunk of his car and put it, blame it on the, on a burglar. And he said that the mafia is a bunch of good guys. <laughs> and he said that uh, Al Bruno paid for his massages, which only tells me he's on a take. And you know, people listen to that every day over there. He stayed there. They kicked me out of there because I, uh, my paperwork, I like to keep it with me uh, so that uh, nobody would go into it, you know. And uh, they wanted to watch it and, you know, for, for, for a few bucks, uh, somebody could forget that they're watching it, you know, easily. And, uh, you know, I just uh, wanted to keep it. They kicked me out for that. I donated a lot of things to them. Donated a playpen. Uh, I donated a lot of kids' books. Uh, Christmas bulbs, Christmas lights, uh, dolls. All kinds of stuff for, for the daycare center there. I like the kids. The kids are our future. Okay, so uh, I heard on the National Public Radio, which both of us listen to, I, I actually told him, and he listens to it a lot himself, that uh, they were talking about police having military type of training, like they were getting together and were calling themselves battle buddies. Is that one the term that they use? They were battle buddies you doing know, training? You know, one of the things I like to say, the police are needed. We need the police, and there's good, a lot of good police. There's a lot of bad apples, though. Look at the, all the people, all the black people that are getting killed uh, unarmed, you know. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> this is true. And, you know, Colin Kaepernick, which was, he was a, he was a great guy, you know. He, he wanted to uh, help the United States of America. And what, is, what happens? Trump right away says, hey, maybe he can find another country to live in. <laughs> and that's the attitude they had with me over there at... Uh, at Friends of the Homeless. Maybe I, because I wanted to try and help to the, the make some changes for the better over there, uh, maybe, uh, you know, I could find some place else to live. And, you know, uh, because I was talking that way, they drug me in at the, uh, at the free meal site, you know. <laughs> those, free, those meals really aren't free, you know. <laughs>
Okay, uh, you uh, did mention uh, the Springfield Friends of the Could Homeless. Could I say something about the but RBK? They, I just wanted to ask, is there some other places in Springfield for the homeless, or is that the only one? Oh, there's other places, but that's where, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's the place that I was accustomed to and I knew a lot of people in there. You know, uh, the LBGQ uh, people, I want to make it clear that, uh, you know, although I'm not a big fan, I, I like to say that they're human beings and they deserve to live just like anybody else, uh, like anybody else. And, you know, uh, because they wanted them, to, the church wanted to convert them, you know, uh, they... Some of them are committing suicide. I mean, uh, why don't the uh, why don't the priest convert well, instead of being a hypocrite? You know, I believe in God and I believe in the church, but I didn't join the church because they teach you forgive and forget. And you know, although that makes a lot of sense, uh, it doesn't work. It only keeps the corruption going. You know, so uh, I believe in the golden rule, the way the way the church was made to to, to teach you. Uh, Try to treat people the way you would like to be treated. I'll pass with that. Okay, uh, when you were talking about uh, trying to do conversions, they just had that on National Public Radio yesterday, that in India that mm -hmm. they were trying to force uh, uh, in the inter-religious uh, inter, inter, uh, groups there, they don't want Hindus you know, marrying what? Muslims and they, you know, they, they yeah. want them to convert. You know, a lot of those gay people aren't happy being gay, but they are, and there's nothing they can do about it, and uh, they're going to be that way the rest of their life. you got to give those people a break, too. They're human beings. So uh, there's other countries that uh, use that tactic that they try to uh, convert people, uh, like I said, that they want them to change their religion. They don't like the idea of Hindus uh, marrying Muslims. Uh, so they want them to convert, so that uh, that's like a, an international issue, uh, conversion. So I just wanted to make that comment because the United States has uh, less of that than some of the other countries. I Seems mean, like everybody, they're always trying to control somebody. They're always trying to control somebody, tell somebody what to do. They'd even pick my girlfriend if I, if I would let them, you know, for control, to control people. That's the way, that's the way they are. It's sad, but... Uh, an awful lot of that's going on. Now, uh, you also mentioned on these uh, papers about the... Uh, all of this is government stuff, you know. Uh, uh, it's true. All of everything that I mentioned on there is government stuff. They, they, uh, uh, they came to me. Is, is it okay to say the, 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 uh, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, program that it was? Uh, Health care. You can't say their name? Well, if you want to mention the name of a particular a company, I don't see why that should be a problem. Okay, well, it's a, the United, United Healthcare Senior Options came to me while I was at the Friends of the Homeless and told me that they, they put transplants, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, uh, what do they call them, uh, implants, teeth, and, and also uh, root canals, you know. So, of course, I, uh, I, I, I signed up with them, you know, and then they sent me. They gave me phone numbers and, you know, they, they sent me on a wild goose trip. Every single dentist that I went to, every single one of them, didn't take me. None of them. None of them panned out. And I, I got it all on paper, though. I got it all written down. I got it on uh, uh, what they call a flash drive, got, you know. But, I mean, that's true. I'm telling you the truth. That, they do that to get you in there. Then, they, then what do they do? I guess they give, put drugs in your toothpaste or something, you know? I don't know what these people are all about, but it's, they're pretty crazy, let me tell you. And they're the ones that we're supposed to respect. You know, they're, they're, you're supposed to respect Big Daddy, and, 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 who, and what are they doing? They're, doing, they're, doing, they're the ones doing wrong. Okay, now I want to mention about the health care thing, because I did pay for my wife's... Uh, uh, a membership for the uh, the thing in the state of Massachusetts that they have offered for people to to get health care, and I made the first payment, and she tried to use her health care, and nobody would take it. She couldn't use it 
for a doctor, she couldn't use it for a dentist, uh, <laughs> uh, she couldn't use it anywhere, so she dropped it. She didn't want to be bothered with it. You she want said, to talk about human rights? <laughs> so uh, she couldn't use the thing there. I did make an initial payment for her, so that was basically kind of a waste of money, but uh, uh, apparently they have uh, health care uh, uh, things, but there's a lot of uh, uh, strings attached to it, so uh, uh, we're kind of a little leery about some of these programs there. I do have a senior program because I have uh, uh, Medicare and I have Tufts as my, my uh, a senior Medicare uh, plan, so I have to make a payment every month for Tufts. Uh, and I just went for a doctor's appointment just uh, this know, week, so I, I do get some benefit out of it. You know, the, the, the reason I'm here today is to talk about the government. They don't even really care for the veterans. They don't. You know, uh, uh, they go to war, you know, they come back all messed up. They'll never be right again the rest of their life. They got PTSD real bad. And, uh, you know, they try hard not to pay them for that. And then when they die, they say, what a great guy he was. <laughs> that guy's dead. <laughs> Help him when he's alive. He helped you, you know. That's the way I feel. You know, they also want you to get these cell phones that uh, uh, they know where you are every second. They know every word that you say. And it's very important for them to know when they're plugging in at night, you know. In the free country, the free world. That's not free, you know. I got friends that were in Vietnam that died fighting for our freedom. That ain't free. Go ahead. Okay, now uh, when you're talking about the phone, uh, I just got a phone just uh, at the beginning of this year. I didn't have a phone for about five years because I didn't think it was necessary. The reason why I had to get a phone is that because of the virus, most of the buildings were closed. I wanted to go uh, to a vet and you, uh, the, all the doors were all locked. They, they have a sign on the door that you have to call them. You can't go inside the, uh, the office there, so I had to get a phone. But I didn't have a phone for five years and uh, I don't have a computer. Uh, so there's uh, both of us, uh, one of those that were not really uh, tuned into this digital age where most people are having smartphones and they claim on the, the radio that most people look at their smartphones more than 200 times a day. So they're walking around checking their phone uh, morning, noon, and night. So that's not really uh, something that I'm particularly interested in. But uh, now in this day and age, people seem to want to have their smartphones. So uh, he, we want wants to talk another subject now. You know what? Uh, what I wanted to say was uh, when they gave these uh, these uh, 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 stimulus checks. You know, I, the first one it was uh, from uh, President Trump, and you know, I, boy, I, I I I felt like something had to be done. I uh, I donated that to the Democratic Party. And uh, then we got the $600 check, and, uh, and I, you know, I'm living off my Social Security. I'm doing all right, you know, and I, I felt like there was uh, uh, families that had children that, that, that needed it more than me, and, uh, and I donated that to the Democratic Party. But, you know, then I got a letter stating that they wanted me to <laughs> send them the, some more money. They got that just before the, the new stimulus check of $1,400 came out, you know. <laughs> You know, by now I, I, I realize that uh, <laughs> that's all they think about is money, you know, and, uh, and uh, you know, they, they're, they're not going to help me. So what I did was I just told them the truth. I said, look, I donated that money to the, uh, the general, uh, 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 the, uh, the attorney general's office because I'm trying to get help. <laughs> and you're not, you know, I, I, waiting for you is unbelievably crazy. I'm 72 years old. I've been outside three years now. 72, you know, it, uh, we, you know, in this country, we were, give us your old, your tired, you know. <laughs> That's the way they talk, but they don't walk the walk. Okay, so when you were saying you're outside, this also includes a January when it's below zero, yeah. but you said yeah. that you don't really have any problem with the cold weather. Well, let's put it this way, I know how to survive, let's put it that way, okay? I'm not saying I don't have a problem. I have problems with the hot weather. I have problems with the cold weather. I have problems when it rains. I have problems when it... I have problems all the time.
but I deal with them and I can deal with them. But I'm just saying, uh, I'm 72 and they, they really don't, they don't care. I, 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 I let them know when I sent the 13, uh, the 13 counselors at Springfield, I let them know. <laughs> I'm 72 years old, you know. what? They didn't even reply. Nothing. They <laughs> say nothing. <laughs> you want to talk about human rights? I'm human. And uh, the last thing that you had on here, well, I think we uh, covered some of these other topics here, uh, the meals, the food stamps, the health care, uh, uh, the government. Uh, is there anything else that you want to say about the government be before we change? Well, you know, all of these things are about the government. They're all about the government, really. You know, uh, uh, they, uh, they're all about the government. Uh, my doctor... Uh, you know, who I've been seeing for probably 20 years now or something. He's a really, really nice guy and good doctor and a nice guy. You know, he's a Jew. Uh, they've, been through, they've been through hell and uh, they're human, you know. Uh, anyways, he knows that for years now, years, I've been telling him when he wanted to give me a prescription, I said, look, please, I don't trust the government. Don't give me a prescription. Tell me some over-the-counter thing I can do. And I never took prescriptions unless I had to. Yeah, you can you can find that out with the with with uh, United Healthcare. They'll tell you that uh, I, I don't get get prescriptions over there. I don't get prescriptions. I try not to, you know, because I don't trust the government. And you know, they put it there. I didn't just reach up out of the air and uh, and, and 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 pull that out of it. I've been treated to. They've been teaching me for 12 years now not to trust them. <laughs> you heard what I've been telling you. They, that's 12 years of that stuff. You know, uh, what do you expect, you know? Uh, I mean, I'm not that stupid. Eventually, you're going to stop trusting people. I, my doctor asked me, he said, did you get a COVID shot? I said, no, I didn't. He says, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I said, well, you know, I don't trust the government. He says, I know, you've been saying it right along. And uh, that's the only reason, that's the only reason I don't trust the government. And, uh, you know, they started out with, uh, uh, we, were, we had to wear a mask and uh, stay six feet away. And now it's back to that. Wear a mask and stay six feet away. They don't want you to get a shot, a booster shot, and, uh, and stay six feet away. Well, you know, there's a lot of people. Uh, the, the, the police aren't getting them, you know. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that ain't getting them. And uh, I, my reason is good. I, I, I just don't trust them, you know. Uh, and why didn't they give me a reason to trust them? Then I probably would, you know. They never did. Okay. Uh... There was uh, some information on the radio there I was thinking about here, uh, but they did mention that uh, today is the day that they were uh, going to discuss the uh, idea of actually providing a booster shot. Some people think it's not absolutely necessary. I and, heard that too. And what they mentioned that uh, Israel is actually considering a fourth booster shot, and uh, they're really overdoing it. So they're really... Uh, uh, thinking uh, maybe you need two booster shots there. I was told when I had my, uh, my uh, uh, physical uh, that I should be getting a flu shot, and I said, well, they gave me one shot. It wasn't uh, the COVID shot, but it was for something else. And I said, how many shots do I have to be taking? So I'll have to probably go get a flu shot, which I'll probably have to go somewhere like a CVS or a Walmart because they offer the flu shots. They you know didn't what? happen to have it there. You know, what, Randy, I forgot to say this. Uh, when I was talking about Friends of the Homeless, when I did get evicted there, you know, I, it wasn't from doing anything wrong. They offered me $1,700 twice because they wanted me to leave because they didn't like the, the idea of me trying to help... Uh, the people in there, you know, uh, trying to change, make some changes. There was some real crazy stuff going on in there, and I was trying to help with it, you know. They don't like that. Uh, they like to keep that stuff, that corruption going on. They, they like that. Uh, anyways, when they evicted me, they evicted me. I never did get a chance for a jury trial, which is my right, and I wanted it. I never got it. And uh, they also, uh, one of the things that they uh, uh, did was... Uh, they knew that I had an accident case with a head injury going on, and I still got that same case going on today. And uh, they also knew that I had emphysema. <laughs> they kicked me out anyway. 
human rights. <laughs> well, they, they did try to get me into some convalescent home, but as you can see, I'm three years uh, outside. I really don't need to be in a convalescent home. Okay, uh, uh, some th uh, things are uh, uh, obvious that they have uh, people that don't really like you for who you are. So you said that you had a problem. I don't know if you want to discuss this about your storage unit. You were, yeah. you were in the storage unit yeah. and you went there on Christmas Eve. Yes. And this was Christmas Eve when he That's went to right. the storage unit. That's right. And what happened then? Okay, well, Christmas Eve was the wor worst day of the year, you know. It was raining and windy, real wind, real strong wind. I was getting wet. Uh, so the, the, the unit that's been empty for months, uh, I, I decided to, uh, go, you know, that, that I was going to the bathroom in there. And I would go to the bathroom and I'd take it out later, and, you know, after I was done and, 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 and get rid of it. But, I mean, you know, you have to do it somewhere, you know. Uh, anyways, I, anyways. Uh, I stayed there the night because I, I, I was getting wet, you know, I, and I didn't. I, I was walking all day. I was afraid that I was going to get get uh, sick and get COVID or something, you know, and so uh, I spent the night. Well, when I woke up in the morning, the wind and rain, wind and rain was going so bad. I decided to make two trips. So I brought my my bedroll back to my unit first. My unit is full. It's completely full. I, I put it, when I opened up the door, the rain was blowing in, uh, was blowing in. Uh, so I decided to put a lock on the other one and uh, uh, come back later and get it. Well, when I came back, the, the, the lock had been cut off. She said that the, the unit was rented. Well, why would she cut a, a lock off a rented unit, you know? <laughs> she never liked me from the beginning. When she first got there, about three, four years ago, something like that, she told me I should just forget about there was a fire and uh, about a third of my of my uh, storage bin was uh, was was uh, damaged from the from the fire you know uh, it wasn't in my unit but they they got a, a hollow part in the roof that uh, all the smoke went in there and damaged everything and uh, she just wanted me to forget about it then she kept bothering me I ended up having to tell her look I, I want to uh, I, w I want to do all my dealings with Marianne, who was a really nice lady there, and also Mary, the old lady there. These were nice people. She was not that way, and I had to hide from her a lot, you know, and uh, <laughs> really, she was that bad. She called me a thief. She said that I uh, broke into units. I didn't break into no units. I didn't steal anything. I turned in a cell phone, and she, she, uh, she gave it to the guy, back to the guy, and the guy tried to give me ten dollars. I wouldn't even take it. I wouldn't take the ten dollars. That's the kind of guy I am. You know, this woman is is bad. But you know, uh, when you're running a place, you know, uh, you seem to be able to do just about anything you want to do. You know, and uh, I just had to avoid her. That's what I tried to do. The PVTA is the same thing. I tried to avoid a woman that was ri riding the bus. And this first, the storage bin woman, she told a lot of lies, you know, to get me evicted. And uh, I can prove that they're, they're lies. And also the PVTA woman told a lot of lies. I, I tried to avoid getting on her bus any time she was driving because I didn't like the way she treated people. It was terrible. Uh, so one day I, I, I got stuck. I was in Holyoke and I was trying to get a bus back and she pulled up. And, uh, you know, she, uh, she, so I was nervous. I said, this is the only one going back to Northampton. I said, I got to get a bus. I said, is she driving all the bus? And the, the, the uh, security guy said, no, she's, there's other bus drivers doing it. I said, oh, okay. Then I asked the other bus drivers that were in the, uh, the terminal there, uh, and they said, yeah, she, there's other bus drivers. Well, she came back anyway. There wasn't no other bus driver. So he, the, the uh, security guy said, well, she should be able to take you anyway. You know, she should take you. So <clears throat> I went on the bus. Well, when I got on the bus, she said, everybody off the bus, I'm shutting down. So I went to get off the bus, and she slammed the door on my cart, and I couldn't get off, me or my cart. We were, we were stuck there. So <laughs> I yelled out, I said, I can't get off. You, you got me, you got your door slammed on me, on my cart. So she opened up the, the door, I got off the bus, I said, boy, you're the worst I've ever seen. 
But that's all I said. I didn't say no swear or anything. She said that I called her an asshole. She said that I swore at her. You know, and I, she said that I, in the past I didn't wear a mask. Well, everything on, on the PVTA is recorded. Everything. So I, uh, of course, uh, they trespassed me. <laughs> you know, they never checked ran anything back to see if uh, those things were true what she said. They just trespassed me. And I had, I had to stand over and stop and shop and beg everybody that was coming out the door for a ride home. I'll pay them $20. And a Puerto Rican lady gave me a ride. But you know, I've been walking for over a year because of that. Then they, they and, and, and you know, I tried to appeal. I wrote many letters uh, uh, talking about my uh, innocence, many letters uh, proclaiming my innocence, and they just ignored it. Then uh, my mail was coming a month and a half. I got 15 letters a month and a half. And then an, another month and a half, another 15 letters came. And, you know, I, I realized something was wrong. You know, what I did was I, I had them copied, and I opened them up after I copied them, you know, and uh, the guy wrote down the date and everything. You know, I, this, this is the way I've been treated. Now, when I talked to uh, Damar, uh, which is, uh, he's, he's, a, he's a lawyer. He's supposed to be a real good lawyer. Uh, I, Charles Damar is his name. Anyways, when I talked to him, he had changed his address, the same as me, and it took him three days to get the mail. I, he had me send him some snail mail, and it took three days. It took me a month and a half to get mail. You know, something is wrong here. And uh, I spoke about that on, uh, on the telephone yesterday uh, with, uh, with legal aid, and uh, they said they'd get back to me, but, you know, people, people tell you anything. <laughs> That's, what I, that's been my experience. Then they wonder why you don't trust them, why you have trust issues. Go ahead. Okay, well, uh, he's kind of uh, discussing some of the things there, and uh, we also uh, had a comment about the COVID thing, and I don't really want to discuss too much about that because that seems to be on the news just about every day. Yeah, There's always something there that... Uh, that they're talking about, like we we mentioned that they're thinking about. I don't think they really him. have it down yet. You know, uh, they, they're they're mm -hmm. trying, they're trying to get uh, everything ready. And you know, I, I, I give Biden a lot of credit. He's trying hard to get, get it under control, but I don't really think they know what they're doing exactly yet. Like I said, we're right back to where we started. We got to wear masks and uh, and stay six feet away, even if you got a booster shot. You get a booster shot, you can still get the virus. I mean, it's the the uh, uh, the pandemic, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, you give it to somebody. <laughs> you know? It's really crazy, I know, and I know that the thing is really serious and everything, but uh, I don't know, I, I don't trust the government, and you can see why, everything I've been telling you, you can see why I don't trust them. Okay. They don't give you no reason to trust them. Okay, well, like I said, I listen to the National Public Radio and some lady, uh, uh, in Texas was uh, complaining she had two kids in school uh, and uh, both both of them got the virus. Uh, these were uh, kids that were under 16 and uh, for one it didn't really affect the kid as, as much but the second one had to actually go on a ventilator. She was 14 I guess, a uh, 14 year old student in Texas. Uh, the mother said that uh, had to go on a ventilator, was only 14 years old, so uh, that's one of the reasons why that I guess they're kind of uh, trying to have people uh, get the shot, uh, but uh, you know, it's more prevalent in the United States than in some of the other countries. Some of the other countries, they're looking to get shots, they want to get the shots, and they're saying that why should the rich Americans be getting a booster shot when they should be sending more yeah, uh, they're vaccines? Saying, yeah, yeah. yeah, they want it to send to, uh, to other countries because they're all waiting there and they want to get the shots there. And they said, why are these rich countries uh, uh, talking about now even having a booster shot? They need to be sending them out. So uh, uh, there's issues about the virus and the vaccine that... Uh, is really like a worldwide thing there. They're having trouble in all the countries. Uh, uh, even China has trouble with their uh, uh, 
uh, problems with the virus. They try to keep it under control, and China is e extremely controlling. They, they even want their students uh, to sign up with the government to use uh, uh, video games and stuff. They don't want the kids to be using video games, so they're a very controlling uh, a government, our, at least our government, they're not saying that you have to sign up to use video games, but we do have some uh, 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 better uh, things with the government in the United States than say like a China or something. They're very controlling over there. You know, uh, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna be, uh, gonna be evicting a lot of people uh, uh, because. Uh, you know, uh, now they're now they're starting to lean towards the uh, own, the, the the owners of the places, and uh, a lot of people are going to be evicted, and crime is going to go right up. It's going to go sky high, and you know, uh, I hate to say it, but uh, uh, you know, uh, staying outside uh, like I am uh, isn't isn't uh, too many people can't really handle that. You know, and I'll tell you something: jail's a lot easier than uh, that, and. Uh, Three squares a day, a gym, gym every day. Two two days a week, you go to the library, go outside, out, out in the game room, and, and you got a roof over your head. You go in the game room every night and play chess. You know, uh, that's true. Uh, and also, I'd like to say that uh, you know, uh, if you are homeless. And you're not, you're afraid of jail, which you really shouldn't be, you know, uh, I'll say this. You could probably, you better get underneath something, you know. If you don't get underneath something, there's a possibility of it raining and you don't want to get wet, you know. Uh, even if you have to sneak up on somebody's porch, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. You know, we got to survive. I'll pass with that. Okay, well, uh, I've uh, seen a lot of the homeless people around here. I actually uh, went to buy some gas on Route 9 and some guy came over to me asking me for some money there. I was just getting gas. He said, oh, I'm homeless. I'm looking to get some food. And I said, okay, well, I'm not going to be able to give you too much, but I gave him like a couple of quarters there. But he actually came over to me when I was buying gas and claiming that he was homeless and that he was needing some money. So a lot of times people are getting turned off by uh, people like that when, you know, they're approached by somebody that said, oh, I'm homeless, can you give me some money or something? They're very aggressive and it does turn some people off. So when uh, you say that you might be homeless or something, some people would uh, be feeling that uh, uh, there's something wrong that, oh, why should you uh, be homeless? But there's a lot of issues, like, for example, the large amount of homeless people in California. They said, like, Los Angeles area has something like 60,000 homeless people. You might have a mile of people in tents. You're driving down the road and you see tent and people in one area there for a mile living uh, as homeless people there. You know, you know, I, you know, I, I know what you're saying. You know, uh, you know, it's sad, but you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not going to work out for a lot of people. A lot of people, and maybe not even the, the, the jails, it won't work out for them because crime definitely is going to go up. So uh, the homeless uh, are going to be more and more prevalent because uh, they're wanting to evict people now or, or take their uh, houses if they're not paying mortgages and stuff. So there's probably going to be a lot more people. Uh, uh, hopefully there'll be more like him that's gonna, not going to be a nuisance homeless person, somebody that's coming up and asking for money. That's, they're more like a nuisance that they come over and they say, have you got some money so I can buy some food? I mean, yeah, they don't really need to be uh, going up to people to ask them for money there. I don't know, you probably don't even bother asking anybody Never. for money. Never. As a matter of fact, I don't take it if they if they offer it to me, and it does get offered to me, because I walk around with a cart, but uh, I don't take money. Uh, no. Uh, I'm I'm pr I'm proud, you know. I I don't know how I still stay proud, but I am, you know. Uh, and I believe in God. And, uh,
uh, if I have the money, I, I believe in taking care of myself, you know, uh, don't, don't bother people for it. That's the way I am. Now, you know, I, I go down to the head, I go down to the Northampton uh, Law Library, and they know, they know that I don't even get in people's cars. I've been talking about global warming since way back in, uh, uh, when I was in uh, Friends of the Homeless, you know, and, uh, and they're talking about it more than ever, but yet they're trying to get me to, uh, to go to Belchertown. I can't do that. I can't do that walking. What, what do they want me to do? They want me to buy a car to go there? <laughs> you know, this is the way, this is the crazy world that we live in. It is. You know, it's, it's sad, but uh, it's the people running the show. They're the ones you got to watch out for. They're not good people. Okay, the reason why they want you to go to Belchertown is because the court is located in Belchertown that they wanted you well, to go you to, know, or well, what? They, well, you know, they could have had me do it. I, I, I could have done it on a phone. But his phone wouldn't get Zoom. So I ended up, uh, they ended up saying, well, you can't do it. So you're going to have to come to Belchertown. Well, they, they, they got, uh, you could get it on a computer here, you know. Uh, you know what I mean? They, it's all corrupt is what it is. It's all corrupt. You know, that's the truth. I mean, you could go, you could, you could uh, dance around it and everything, but it all boils down to the same thing. You know, you, you really can't deny that uh, there's too much corruption in the world. And it's the people that we're supposed to be respecting that are the worst. Okay, well, uh, so we covered a lot of topics here. Uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, mention some other things. Uh, for example, I myself as kind of more like an alternative kind of a person because all my jobs have been part-time jobs since 1975. So I, I haven't really earned that much money myself and I managed to get by because I have Social Security. But uh, there's people that are, uh, you know, they're outside and uh, they're looking to get money. They'll be standing on the side of the road and everything like that. And uh, like I said, it kind of gives people a bad impression when you're standing there. I, uh, I see people sitting over there on the sidewalk at the Goodwill store in Hadley that they're lying there or hanging out over there at the Goodwill store. I haven't seen, seen them lately. I have a feeling that uh, the police might have chased them away because people were complaining because they were kind of just right there blocking the road there. And uh, I did see an amorous motorcycle policeman ride over in that area and he went driving in back of the uh, big Y there so he might have been looking for homeless people because they did uh, chase away the homeless people from the woods in back of big Y. Uh, they had... Uh, taken uh, all the stuff that was in the woods there and threw it all in the dumpster. I happened to witness, witness that when they were coming and taking all the stuff away because they didn't like the homeless people. And they uh, put signs there, uh, no trespassing signs, so they've been trying to uh, keep the homeless people away from that area, but you know, they're not going to be able to keep them away if all the time. They'd probably just go from one location to another. Uh, like I said, I haven't seen them at the Goodwill store, but they used to uh, sit there all the time on the sidewalk there all the time. And uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, something happened. They might have gotten some kind of trespass notice or something, because that's what happened to uh, a lot of the people on Route 9, is what I was told, because I inquired from one of these homeless people. I said, I don't see anybody uh, on the uh, Route 9 anymore asking for money. And this was one of the girls there, and she said, oh, the police came and gave them trespass notices that if they're back there uh, asking for money, the police can come and arrest them. So they gave them trespass notices, and so they moved on to other areas. So that was uh, uh, one of the things that they did around here, that giving the homeless people trespass notices. I don't know, did they ever give you a trespass notice? I told you, I, I trespassed from the PVTA. The PVTA yeah. gave you a trespass yeah. notice yeah. there. So uh, they do uh, use that to keep people and, in line, basically. Well, you know, I don't know what they, you know, they, it's a lot of corruption is what it is. They just try to control people is all, you know, that's, 
basically what it's all about is controlling people, you know. Uh, they they want to rule the world is what it is, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm 72 years old. When, when am I old enough to make my own decisions, you know? Uh, it's pretty crazy. We really do live in a crazy, crazy world, you know. And it doesn't seem to be getting any better. But I know one thing. When Obama said that if you don't talk about it, it doesn't go away. You'll just get double and triple help is the same thing, and it's true. So I'm talking about it. And uh, I'm not afraid. I believe in God, and I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of the government. They've already... Uh, Messed over me a hundred times, you know. Uh, I'm not afraid at all. I'll pass with that. Okay, and uh, uh, last thing I wanted to mention is that my wife uh, 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 was taking care of her aunt who was in her 90s, and we had to go to Long Island all the time. And uh, uh, the government actually forced the aunt to leave the house and go to a facility and she went to many different facilities there and it was uh, she didn't want to go she wanted to stay at the house there and uh, the government basically forced her out and she ended up uh, dying at one of those facilities on Long Island but she went to about uh, four different uh, facilities because they felt that they didn't want uh, this person to be alone in the house there. They felt that uh, she was incapacitated as they'll use some kind of uh, uh, legal terminology and so this 90 something old woman who lived all her life independently all of a sudden was forced to go to a facility there. So I'm guessing even though you're 72 now if you're still around in another 10 to 20 years, the government may still uh, have the power to force you to go to a they facility. They don't have power. They, they would they have the power for, because they can't the force police, nobody to do nothing. Well, the police would come, uh, say, if there was some kind of court order, they would have the, uh, well, they, the legal right to do that, well, like my gonna, aunt. What are they going to do? Lock, it, lock your hands? They would, lock, they would lock you up in a facility yeah, if, yeah. if you have a court order. I'm just saying my, uh, my wife's aunt uh, was forced to leave her house. She, she was living independently. She pushed a shopping cart to the grocery store. She went shopping on her own. She did everything, but she fell down. Uh, in the house there, and they felt that she wasn't they safe. They can't make you stay anywhere you don't want to stay. You know? Well, yeah. uh, uh, this Unless is it's a jail, legal jail, question. Jail, maybe there. jail, that's it. That's it, uh, only jail. Uh, but uh, we had to go to court, and she had to be testifying in front of a judge there. So she could get up and so, walk away. Uh, you know? she could, when she, she goes to the place, she could she, get up and leave. Well, uh, they they put her in the facility and she was locked up. The, one of the facilities, it's kind of interesting. Uh, they should, what, what they should, they go around trying to control people. What they should do is practice some self-control, you know, really. This is one of the facilities on Long Island. We had to go uh, visit her aunt and uh, there was uh, a security guard at the uh, gate there and we had to be signing in showing our ID and we had to sign in to get in there so we went in to go visit the aunt there but uh, everything was all locked up they have it like a prison there but it, instead of a prison for some uh, country huh got, got her in a prison so they uh, they put uh, her aunt in this uh, facility there and uh, they're under lock and key there they can't leave or anything so that is uh, uh, the way things are especially if the older you get, the more likely you may end up in that kind of situation. So she managed, like I said, until her 90s, and then once she started having problems, then the court intervened because she had to go to a hospital, and the hospital uh, is the one that will uh, uh, contact the court, so the hospital contacted Does the court. Does she have any family? My wife was the family that she was oh. dealing with there, so uh, uh, yeah, I hear you. so my wife uh, became the guardian for uh, for the aunt. So we had to drive from Massachusetts to Long Island all the time to go uh, visit the aunt because she was obligated to go uh, visit the aunt. But we ended up going to these different facilities. Like I said, you had to go in one. You had to sign up at the front door there. The security guard would take your ID. Uh, she did go to a private house. There was a, uh, somebody that uh, 
had her in a private house, which we thought might be a pretty good uh, situation. She was living uh, with uh, some a person that was uh, that was how they earned money. That they provided care for uh, seniors, and it was somebody's private home. But I guess uh, uh, the aunt had fallen over there too, and my wife took her out of there. So uh, but the aunt kept falling all the time, and. They, they said that this is probably not a good place for her if she's falling, so that's that's probably what the story is. Well, so. see, if somebody could have took her in, knowing your wife, I can understand why they put her in there, because your, your wife ain't going to take care of her. <laughs> well, the, uh, she uh, was not able to take the aunt out of the state of New York, because uh, they were obligated because she... She lived on Long Island. They were not allowed to take her to Massachusetts, so we had to drive to uh, Long Island all the time. So I just wanted to mention that the older you get, uh, there is a, a likelihood that uh, if there's uh, a, some kind of a, a problem, say like you go to the hospital or something, the hospital has the right to uh, uh, do things that you may not necessarily agree with. So we basically covered all the stuff that we uh, had on the papers there. I have the papers, he's checking them out, and uh, I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to be mentioning, well, yeah. but well, uh, he is uh, an well, expert you know, at being a homeless person because he's been many years yeah, now. I, I just know how to do it, that's all. You know, uh, I'd like to say that uh, uh, really, uh, you know, uh, all of these things that I talked about, they're all related to the government. They're all about the government, you know. Uh, none of them don't have anything to do. Even the Friends of the Homeless, that was a government program, you know. And uh, nobody, there's corruption everywhere you go. Now, don't get me wrong, corruption everywhere you go. But nobody is worse than the government. I found that out. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, my brother-in-law told me before he died, he said, the government kills more people than the Mafia. <laughs> he ain't lying. Just look at what they did last uh, with, with Trump in there, with the COVID. A lot of people died. <laughs> A lot of people died for foolishness. It's true. I'm just telling the truth, that's all. If you want to hate me for that, go ahead. I don't care because nobody really liked me anyway. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> we'll uh, leave it at that. Goodbye.